if you were asked to create the questions for an upcoming interview session for a job opening, where would you start? Odds are you would start with the questions surrounding the skills that you expect of that particular candidate. But we also need to make sure that those interviewees are aligned to our company culture. And this is kind of where I found it really can get difficult. So in today's episode, I want to take you through what I call the VBQ framework. We've all probably even heard of these interesting ways in which to interview for culture fit in a company. So informally, people may take you out for drinks and maybe you're going to find your true self there in terms of whether they're going to align to the culture or not. Uh, or you go through rigorous personality testing because they've got the personalities of the existing team members and they want to see the team chemistry. So there's quite a different approach and, and I don't necessarily think there's this perfect approach to this, but what I want to share is this VBQ framework where I've implemented it for a couple of years and it's really helped us ensure that we increase the probability of an interviewee aligning to our culture, therefore not wasting their time in terms of them actually joining us, as well as not wasting our time in hiring the wrong person. And VBQ stands for value, behavior, and question. And so ultimately what this means is that, number one, we need to make sure that we know the company values, right? What are our company values, which I'll get into now. Then second, we need to make sure that we know the default behaviors linked to those values, all right? So the default behaviors that we expect on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis from our team members, because that is the way in which we emulate the values. And then lastly, we need to make sure that we have questions that will trigger whether someone is going to default to that behavior and in other words, then align to the culture. So let's just jump straight into number one, which is what are our company values? Simon Sinek is a genius at this, and he basically describes it perfectly whereby values cannot be nouns in a business. So for example, you've probably seen integrity, honesty, and all these other types of nouns, especially within the corporate environment. And a lot of the times the marketing team comes up with it more so than anything. And so the, the whole point here is to make sure the company values are verbs or call it doing phrases. So instead of honesty, it can be, we're always honest even when it's uncomfortable. And so what this means is that it's far more practical and also people can visualize this. And so Simon always shares an example where if he came to you and said, if, um, you know, if you can just give me some more honesty today, that wouldn't necessarily be like relatable to anyone. But again, going with the, the doing phrase, if you then said to them, listen, for this upcoming meeting today, if you can just make sure we're honest, even when it's uncomfortable, because I know there might be a lot of pressures, that is far more relatable. And so the whole point here is to make sure our company values are not nouns, but are actually doing phrases. And to give a practical example here, at Search Kings Africa, we've got one value, which is say it how it is. And if you know this podcast and it's called Candid, you'll know that I try my best to live up to being candid. And so say it how it is for me was a complete alignment when it comes to that. And so our value that I'm going to work with today is say it how it is. And we're going to take this through the VBQ framework. Now, moving on to the second component, which is behavior. We need to have at least three behavior statements linked to one of the values. And remember that behavior, the meaning of behavior is how we conduct ourselves, especially towards others. So we need to ensure that these behavior statements that we come up with are what people or of what we expect people to default to in our company, again, linked to those particular values. And just to continue with the example around our value at our company, say it how it is, I'm gonna share then the three behavior statements that we have in our business. The first is we give actionable feedback aiming to assist the person receiving it. The second is we receive feedback with gratitude and let our actions reveal our response 
to that feedback. And then the third is we lean into candid feedback even when it's uncomfortable. And so if we take these three behavior statements that are linked to the value set out is, we now can move into the third component, which is to create the questions in order to trigger whether someone is going to start describing how they would naturally behave in a setting. A quick disclaimer before we continue. This whole approach is not foolproof. It's not 100% complete, as in all we're trying to do here is increase our chances at hiring an individual that is going to be aligned to our culture. Okay, so on to the third component, questions. So now we need to make sure that we have questions linked to these specific behavior statements. And I recommend that you only have a max of three questions for every behavior statement. And remember, you've got a max of three behavior statements for every value. Now, in terms of the example that we've been going with, I'm just gonna carry on with that and use the third behavior statement around candid feedback, leaning into it. And so then the first question that we have in our business is, you know a colleague has made a mistake, you're the only one that has identified this, as well as them, and they're coming up for a performance review. What do you do? That's the first. Then the second is, what would you do if your boss was really excited about a particular idea and you think it is terrible? And then finally, do you believe that positive feedback grows you professionally or is it constructive yet critical feedback? Now, these three questions that I've shared, they provide the opening for you to begin the real debate or conversation with the interviewee. In other words, you need to ensure that the follow-ups are actually created as well as and when you're going through those questions with that interviewee. So when I'm asking someone a question, I'm really focused then on those follow-up questions because I would argue that there are just as, if not even more important than the original question because you're able then to see whether someone is answering you because they're trying to think of the right answer that they think you would like versus actually what they would naturally do. So the follow-up questions place a little bit of pressure, a little bit of non-routine to the actual conversation. To give you an example, a lot of people, after responding to the first question around, you've got your colleague that you've identified the mistake, what would you do? They would answer it around, yeah, I would go to them and I would discuss it with them. And then I say, okay, cool. How would you go to them? Is it WhatsApp? Is it email? Is it meeting them? Uh, if they are remote, what would you do? And so all of a sudden you create this what if scenario and really ask for clarity on certain points. And then you even can ask them, okay, what do you mean by this? Why would you actually choose this? And you're not necessarily trying to get to an end answer. You're trying to see exactly how they would think and then behave within a certain situation. Again, you're trying to assess whether they're actually going to emulate the behaviors that we have in our company as well. And so that's the VBQ framework. So very, very simple. I hope that you apply that. And just to give you a quick bonus tip here, um, what we do at Search Kings Africa is we've got a four interview structure. And so what that means is our first interview is always a technical interview by the head of the department. It's around 30 minutes. It's online, really just focusing on the technical side of things. And then the second interview is the culture interview. I personally take that culture interview and just like I've described to you now, I use the VBQ framework and we've got our questions. I don't ask all the questions, but I really hone in where I wanna test. And then the third interview, if they are successful in the culture interview, then it's a practical assessment that can be anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes um, specific to the, the role that they're of course applying for. And then if that goes well, we have the final one with our founder and that's really focused in in person at our offices or even informally at, for breakfast or anything like that. And what I always say is that those first three interviews are focused on trying to identify why you should employ this person. And then the fourth interview by the founder, by a CEO or whoever you wanna you know, be the true custodian overall of the culture, which normally is that particular um, person, they are actually trying to determine why they shouldn't employ the person. And so that natural tension then, when we, when we come to a position where we talk about whether we are happy or not, that really creates a healthy tension. And if there are disagreements, we have to then um, justify what our thinking is. And I think that's always a great way to make sure 
that you're making the right decision for the team and not just getting a uh, natural bias or anything like that. To recap, I highly recommend you use the BBQ framework, looking at values, behavior, and then creating questions to trigger whether an interviewer is going to naturally opt for a particular behavior in terms of their conduct or when you place them into a specific scenario. Hope that you enjoyed this episode and see you in the next one.